Hello and welcome to Inside Volleyball for a look behind everything going on in volleyball in Australia and beyond. My name is Jonathan Fogarty. It is a privilege to bring it to you this week. Now we've got a very special show for you this week. We're going to look back on the road to the Rio Olympics. We're going to bring in the Australian chef de mission, Kitty Chiller, into the studio, put her under the spotlight. We're going to see a little bit of behind the scenes action to see what our Australian team really got up to there on Copacabana Beach. I am joined by royalty, beach volleyball royalty, not just in Australia but around the world. Firstly, Atlanta bronze, Sydney 2000 gold medal Olympian, Kerry Potas. Kerry, welcome to you. Thank you, John. It is so exciting. How about this I set? I mean, we are, we're on TV again, having beach volleyball and volleyball on TV. Our passion, it's just amazing. It is amazing. Now, I know you don't bring your medals out very, very often, but you might have a little something special to show me this morning, haven't well, you? Well... Just happened we, to have a couple of. We little... actually carry them everywhere. Oh. That's like, geez. Wow. <laughs> Bling. Bling. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Natalie Cook, welcome to you. Five times Olympic participant, which is a record, but now the sixth Olympics for you as a participant, a support staff. That must have been a really different experience. It was. Usually I'm focused on myself and then to focus on the whole Olympic team and help them through their challenges was a big deal. But when I was at Copacabana, I had my bikini in my back pocket in case. <laughs> Just there was in case. She late, did. She late did. Entry. Sub me in, coach. Yeah. <laughs> she was ready to go. We're going to hear a lot more from Nat and Kerry as we go forward. This is a panel show you're going to see every morning, Sunday morning at 9.30. We're looking forward to seeing a lot more from these ladies. Follow us along on the Australian Volleyball, the Volleyball Australia Facebook page, Twitter and Instagram. We want to hear from you. We want to know what's going on in your world of volleyball. Well, it's been a couple of months since our girls competed at Copacabana Beach at the Beach Volleyball at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Taliqua Clancy, Louise Borden, ranked seven in the world going in qualified, and our manly combination of Maria Fay Artacho del Salar, I love saying that name, and Nikki Laird, well, they had to qualify in July up in Cairns in final of the Queensland of my hometown. How great did the girls do, Kerry? Oh, look, both teams did fantastic in Rio, and just qualifying for a Games is pretty special, but... Nikki and Maria Faye, they did it tough. They had to qualify the last hurdle in Cairns. So they were under a lot of pressure, went into the games with a lot of adrenaline. It was pumping for them and they did so well. They were agonisingly close to a win. Unfortunately, they didn't get one at the games. But our number one team, um, Louise Borden, Taliqua Clancy, they were fantastic. Taliqua, 23 years old. Um, she's probably, for me, one of the best talents in the world, not just in Australia, but in the world. And she teamed wow. up with Lou Borden, who has been to two Olympic Games before, indoor volleyball in 2000 and the 2012 Games in beach volleyball. So experience and youth. Absolutely. Kind of like something oh, I remember someone, happened a few years where ago. Where have I heard that before? <laughs> Nat, to you, you saw the phenomenon, you know, M. Fay and Nikki, Taliqua and Lou, they, they were embraced by the Brazilian crowd and, and, and beyond, weren't they? They were quite a phenomenon in Rio. Yeah, well, Nikki and Maria Fay came very close to beating the three-time gold medalist Kerry Walsh and her partner April Ross. Um, so, as Kerry said, didn't get a win out of the pool, but just had this aura about them that the crowd loved them. The Peruvian ancestry of Maria Fay, I'll let you say her last name. Um, <laughs> She got another 25,000 followers on her social media. And so that's what she was excited about because that's the power of the Olympic Games. They had a great time. They performed well. And they're the future of our sport. Absolutely. So if you want to join in the social media frenzy, you can join in, follow us on the Volleyball Australia Facebook page, Instagram and Twitter. We want to hear from you. We want to get behind all of our athletes. So jump on board. And we absolutely want to hear from you. Well, ladies, we talked about the pain of not everyone going home with one of these beautiful medals at the end of the Olympic Games. After Lou and Taliqua lost their last match, they were pretty heartbroken. Let's have a look at what they had to say. I mean, it's, it's obviously stinging pretty hard right now and um, T and I created a lot of opportunities and we fought really hard and, and so you know, in, in a sense, we felt like we we're right in the mix, and um, and so d that definitely stings. It's it's hard to to sort of walk away and feel like you, you um, could have cashed in a little bit more. But um, but yeah, we we dug deep and we fought really hard and we stuck together, and and I think we can hold our heads high. Our expectation was always to play medal rounds. We know we are a top seven, top <laughs> top team of the world tour and on the world stage, and it's disappointing that we fell short of the medal rounds, but again, it's quarterfinals and there's nothing more 
that we could have asked for. T and I uh, share a lot of the same values and, and a lot of the same vision for what we believe we can go and achieve and, and for what we believe um, is important and the highest values that we can bring to the core as people, as a team and as Australians. And so um, I think that's the beauty of our partnership is there's a great synergy around um, what we represent and, and what we stand for and, um, and how we go in and play the game. And it's a great joy to play the way that we play and, um, and it, it gets us a long way internationally. So I'm really proud of that. And they do it! On to the semi-finals! Well, ladies, that was pretty raw. Yeah, it was really heartbreaking, but you know what? That sort of just hits you in the soul and it gives you strength to be even better and be even greater for the next time. So I think even though it was heartbreaking, perhaps a lesson to make them better mm. in the future. And I was right there and I just wanted to go and hug Talika and give her a tissue because the real emotion, they put everything out on that court and it just didn't pay off for them that time. But they'll be hungrier, they'll be stronger, they'll go for it and we've got the Commonwealth Games coming up, so go girls! Fantastic, well there it is, thank you ladies. After the break we're going to turn our attention to the indoor men's volley roos and their journey on their road to Rio, however a bit of a roadblock in the World Champions of Poland. And then after that live in the studio, Australia's chef de mission, Kitty Chiller. Stick around for that. Well, now we move our attention to the indoor volley roos and their road to Rio, where they sadly hit a bit of a roadblock where they had to come up against world champions Poland. Now, Poland, you might remember, were the team that the volley roos sensationally beat at the London 2012 Olympics and really set the world on notice that they were an upcoming team. We're going to have a bit of a look at where the volley roos joined the top tier competition of the World League and they had to come up against the might of Brazil right here in Australia. We're going to have a look at our first ever Deep Dig and the Volley Roos Road to Rio. We've got probably one of the biggest tests you can have in volleyball. On Saturday night we get to play the top team in the world, the Brazilians. So, you know, they're reigning silver medalists from London and also Beijing and they're, they're one of the most consistent and one of the most experienced teams, I guess, in the world. I am Bruno Rezende, the setter of the Brazilian team. We are preparing for, for these Olympic Games, the most important thing in, in our lives. The Brazilians are number one in the world for a reason. They have an incredible depth and incredible skill. I don't know if it's ever happened that Australia's been able to play the number one team in the world on Australian soil. It's definitely going to be a tough game and we're going to have to show up to, to give them some trouble. See you, good night. Guys, what I have to tell you, the moment is serious. It's not because we play with a hall full of people. It's not because it never happened in Australia before. It's because we believe that we can do something today. Take the chance, guy, come on. Let's go. Yes. Well, I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be difficult. This is one of the best teams in the world, but they're human in the end, they're the same as us. We always do this. The soccer is in is our blood, huh? Welcome to the State Sports Centre, Sydney, Australia. This is going to be an epic night for volleyball. Nemo. 
Brazil clinical in that first set. For the points, Thomas Douglas Powell is having a party and there's 6,000 Volley Roos fans invited. It is set point Australia. Why not? <laughs> Why not? And Edgar serves his first ace for the match. That's outstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, Brazil, the world number one, show their class. I am absolutely speechless. To take a set against the world's number one team is something that is absolutely outstanding. You know, the goal of this team is to qualify for the Olympics. We really believe and we are, we are working so fast and we are improving so fast that uh, we will be ready. If I was there with the jersey, my name on my back, my number, and that anthem would sound, I, I would probably just, I hope I wouldn't lose it. To qualify for the Olympics would be everything. Simply just, it would just be everything. John and Kerry, the voices of our amazing indoor and beach volleyball, John. But I knew you had a voice for commentary, not really a head for TV. So that, I know you've, <laughs> you've been graduated to the TV. Congratulations. Um, but how unfair of our boys having to play Poland, the world champions in the last match to qualify for Rio. Not only do they have to beat all of Asia, but then that roadblock, like you said, Poland, world champions, Unfair, better change for Tokyo. Couldn't agree more, Nat, and thank you for your very kind words. After the break, we're going to hear from the Australian chef de mission from the Rio Olympics, Kitty Chiller. Welcome back to the Inside Volleyball Studio where we have our first ever guest, the Australian Olympic team chef de mission, Kitty Chiller. Kitty, welcome Thank to Inside you very Volleyball. Much. Great to be here. Great How are we show. going? So far, so good? Absolutely. I, I need to talk to you about the Olympic experience and, and the journey that you took, but it was so much more than just the three yeah, weeks yeah. that you were in Rio. It was quite a journey for you and you really wanted to set up the culture early and, and help the athletes feel part of something bigger, didn't you? Absolutely. That was a real focus of us all leading into Rio. It was to to reinvigorate what it means to be part of the Australian Olympic team and, and what it means to be an Australian Olympian. And our message to our 422 athletes was you're not just a member of the 2016 Australian Olympic team, but you're adding your name as the latest chapter in a 120 year old Olympic history in this country, which, which is a, uh, you know, a, an incredible thing for, for an athlete to achieve. Nat, for you, five Olympics as an athlete in the centre of the attention and you know, all about you, but this time you had to really flip it around. What was the experience like going from the athlete to the nurturer and the support yeah. staff? Yeah, very humbling to um, sit behind a desk like this and wait for the 422 athletes to come through with their challenges. And our job in athlete services was to take the pressure off them, to fix any problem they had from uniforming to toilets to <laughs> anything else that went wrong. Our job was to take the pressure off them. So I had a great time. Um, I worked a lot harder than I did in my last five Olympics, <laughs> wow. though. Kitty, one of the focuses that you try to get with the village is safe space, clear heads, best environment to perform and for athletes to be able to disconnect from the media and the world. Uh, you know, that bubble must have been broken. Every time they went to the Copacabana Beach and the beach <laughs> volleyball venue must have shattered that serenity that they had. No, it was fantastic because they all came home with great smiles on their faces. They got home at 2 o'clock in the morning, mind you, because the volleyball matches didn't start till midnight. Sure. Um, but no, what a superb venue. Not quite as good as Bondi, of course, but, but just second best. Uh, it, I only got there once, but it was noisy, it was colourful, it was vibrant, it was, it was everything that was real in Brazil. I, I can't let you go without asking you about Chloe Esposito as, the, you know, as a, a proud modern, path, modern pentathlete. That must have been an all-time moment to see us win gold in that event. Oh, look, absolutely. Chloe, I've known her all her life. I used to train and compete with her father in the 80s. And to see that family succeed, and it was a family success, the, the sacrifices and investment that they've made, and Chloe just 
works so hard and is so humble and so grateful for the opportunity that she's had. It was a, it was a fantastic win. Brilliant. Fantastic. All right. Well, we've heard from our panellists. Now let's take a time out. One minute with Kitty Chiller. Can I say coming home? No, I won't say coming home. Having the opportunity to see 422 magnificent athletes live out their dream. Ah, and that isn't beach volleyball. Um, rugby sevens, new sport in the games, fantastic teams, men and women's, and the girls, of course, winning gold. Shouldn't have happened, shame. Fantastic in the end, best village I've ever been in. Tough at the start, good at the end. Hardworking, humble, a very, very deserving winner. Fantastic to see. Being front seat to see Catherine Skinner win gold in the women's trap. Uh, shoot off to get into the gold medal match and such incredible pressure. Yeah, big surprise, nice surprise. Well, there we had time out with Kitty Chiller. Kitty did pretty well. Uh, under pressure, but all good, I think. Thanks so much for being a great sport. My and pleasure. supporting volleyball so well. Thank you so My much. My pleasure, thank you. After the break, let's have a look at all the news from around the volleyball world. Welcome back to Inside Volleyball, the show that's all about you and everything that's happening in the world of volleyball. And it is now time to hit the volleyball news with my wonderful panel. And first up, we've got a great opportunity to see both the women's volley ruse and the men's volley ruse in action. Great news, ladies. The women's volley ruse will be hosting the World Grand Prix Level 3 final, so you can get out and cheer for our women's volley ruse, which is outstanding. And the men's volley ruse, they are coming back to Australia. You're going to see them play in the World League again this year. So that is great news, Kerry. It's fantastic to have both women and men top of the country, top of the world here playing with us to watch. Very, but very speaking of men's indoor, our greatest player, if not our, well, he's definitely our tallest player, over seven foot tall, Thomas Edgar, who's affectionately known as Boxy. I've asked him why, but he hasn't, he can't tell me why. But anyway, he is spiking his way around the world. He's currently playing in Argentina. Um, he's playing for a club team called Bolivar, and they just competed in the World Club Championships, and he was the top scorer. So what an amazing mm. feat for an Aussie to be the top scorer in the world. Fabulous. He made 74 points during that whole tournament. So that's a, wow. a lot of jumping, a lot of spiking, a lot of scoring. Fabulous. <laughs> he was a spectator with you. I saw him in Rio spectating with you, learning even more about indoor volleyball and whitewater canoeing. But that's another story. <laughs> Natalie, over to you. What have you got on the news desk well, today? Well, first of all, I'm so excited about women's and men's indoor volleyball coming back world league level. This Fabulous. is great. Your kids yeah. can get out there and watch and get autographs from the players and see how this game of ours that we love is just the best in the world. My news. Okay, this is cool. Today's a big day for volleyball in Australia. We have the finals of the Australian Volleyball League, men and women where our state-based teams have been battling out and the medals will be decided tonight. And you can see it live streamed at volleyballaustralia.org.au. So that is exciting, but it gets better because where I started playing volleyball was at the Australian Volleyball Schools Cup. And the opening ceremony is tonight as well. So our young kids that are gonna go and watch our indoor volleyballers play in our world leagues, will be the future of our sport. They're going to play for a week. Go the John, kids. Go the kids. Good luck, kids. We will see Go highlights. The kids. Go the kids. Absolutely. Go the kids. Wonderful. More well, medals. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for being so fabulous. Sadly, folks at home, that is the end of our first ever episode. It's been kind of a big day. We're a bit... 
We're a bit tired and emotional, but it's been fabulous. So before my panel gets too unruly, it's been an absolute privilege bringing you to. We want your content. We want you to get involved. This is your show, Australia. We want your funny volleyball memes. You want your videos of people being six-pack with volleyballs. We want to hear from you. Get online, volleyballaustralia.org.au. Get on Twitter. Get on Facebook. Get on Instagram. Follow these wonderful ladies. Follow everything about the sport of volleyball. Thank you to Kitty Chiller, our wonderful chef de mission, for coming in today. Thank you to you, Nat. Thank you to you, Kerry. See what yeah. I did there? And, and we'll see you next if time. If you want to know what a six-pack is, take it away, Here it kids. Comes. Watch your Thanks. face. See you next time. Yeah.